Jesus poos, we just go on and on and on. Yes, the relentless juggernaut of reality television continues. We've learned that Harry's much like a poorly ostrich, uh, that Jay looks nice in a long sleeve top, and that frosted flakes taste delicious from an espadrille. Uh, but what else have we learned today? Well, any prospective employers out there, a little bit of advice. You might want to check some of the details on Alex's CV. Um, she probably spelt CV wrong for a start. <laughs> I used to work with Brian, you know, Jam. Did you? Mm. Not with him, with him, but he used no, to work at... He uh, worked at the airport about eight years before Alex did. So, so not no, really. Then. Not really. It's close enough. <laughs> uh, so Adam was evicted last night. I wonder what he was thinking about doing when he got out. Oh, well... <laughs> no points for guessing there. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what kind of bands Aaron's into, uh, but my suspicion is they're pretty crap. I look like a bit of a rock star. With a groupie. No, you don't. You just don't. Uh, and we all know that Jay likes to keep his back passage nice and tidy in case any lass wants to lick his hoop. His words, not mine. Uh, I think it's a hygiene thing, um, but by that logic, he also seems to have shit for brains. <laughs> Maybe stop when the hair stops. Uh, now, tonight's panel has got more front than Blackpool, Brighton and Carol Vincent combined. First up, he's the Vivian Westwood obsessed, chain-smoking Big Brother favourite. Cut him in half and like a stick of rock, he'd read bloody brilliant. It's David Ramsden! <laughs> She's a model, actress, and the definition of MILF. Officially the nation's favourite ever page three stunner is Linda Lusardi. Yeah. A lot of love, a lot of love. He presents, he sings, he writes, and occasionally he wears a nappy. Journalist of sorts and my very own TV big brother, it's Jamie East. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, he takes genuinity to the next level. Combining sweetness and swagger, it's your fifth evictee, Aden! Packed show tonight. Where to start? Uh, Linda, let's begin with Faye and Jem. Do you think this is the, the sort of sisterly banter and love that we were expecting on Big Brother? Well, I'm glad that Jem's actually sort of starting to talk now because she's been boring since she's put in. I mean, <laughs> all that VT about what she was going to do and how tough she was, and we haven't seen any of it. She's definitely harder than Faye, though, isn't she? Oh, definitely. At I least she's so jealous face. of Faye. Yeah, she's, she's so there's, jealous there's of Faye. There's some jealousy there. Uh, Jamie, did you feel like uh, we got a real insight into their relationship? Well, it's, it's always going to happen when you put two sisters in, but I just loved the kind of smackdown, which was like, wait till mum sees this. Which was just like... <laughs> which is just appalling, really. But I love that they can argue over anything as well. It's like, Jem, I said I wanted to have a shower first. Shut up, you're yeah, not Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're, are they too similar or too dissimilar? Are they, is it, do opposites, I, are, they, are they very opposite, I think? I don't know the science of it. I mean, are they even sisters? Faye is just so needy, isn't she? Yeah. I'm going to jump over here, because someone has my wand. Where is the wand? Get your I, wand. I feel naked without it. <laughs> Um, audience, are we pleased to say that uh, to see that Jay and Lou are back on track? No. no. Oh, no. To be honest, they're just together just for screen time. I really don't think it's real anymore. I don't know. Louise likes the junk in his trunk, apparently, in tracksuit bottoms. Apparently, she's loving that. Yeah, but I, no, I just don't think it's real anymore. I think that at first they really liked each other. I just think that they know that they're not getting um, the votes anymore because he came third in the... Um, who said, who said yes? Who thinks that it is yeah. nice? Yeah, yes, yes. No, everybody wants a bit of love in the house. We love well, a love story. We love a romance. At the moment, everybody wants and we them. don't want it to end. They're quite, and they're quite sweet. Louise seems really sweet. They smitten. are. Yeah, and, definitely. And she, she likes the wagon him. that he's dragging, and that's what it's all about. Um, <laughs> David, uh, what about Aaron talking to himself? Uh, are, we, are we seeing a bit of a Vanessa Feltz moment? Do you know what I think it is? When, you, when you're in the house, you find yourself talking to the public as if you want them to believe you. So I think he's like <laughs> walking on the garden, saying things so everyone like agree with him and like back him up if, if you know what I mean. So it's like feeling sorry for himself, but getting the public on his side. But do you think he should save it for the diary room? Is I that... think he should shut up. OK. <laughs> Just don't say it at all. Um, <laughs> Aden, Aaron said you feel the need to self-promote. Uh, do you think that's right? Do we know what that means? Um, let's put it this way. I've had a lot of experiences in my life and I'm still Oh, we young. know. We know. Oh, <laughs> oh anyway. <laughs> but, um... It's not self-promotion. <laughs> it's not self-promotion. It's just talking from experience. And if he sees that as I've had more experience or I've topped him, then that's too bad on him. 
And everyone's telling their own stories. That's sort of what it's about, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. It's part what of you've... Big Bubby, getting to know people. Yeah, uh, yeah, Anton Cheats. Uh, Jamie, the House found out Aaron uh, was the most popular nominee. How do you think that's going to change how Aaron acts and how the rest of them act? Uh, I think he probably will save him from, from, a couple of, uh, from a couple of nominations over the next couple of weeks. But I think, hopefully, because he started off being a bit of a, bit of a dick. <laughs> and then, and then he, then he became nice. That's the nice. technical term. That's the technical term. Then he became quite nice for a couple of weeks, and now he's just gone a bit Rain Man, and the whole burping <laughs> thing is just, is just a bit weird. And he started becoming like prize prick again. Uh, so I think he, he's on, he's treading a very slippery slope to prickdom. Yeah, I think. That... <laughs> <laughs> I get him a straight jacket. Well, um, the news really seemed to shake Anton. What do we think his next move will be? Anyone? Do we think he's gonna? Sorry, is he gonna get nice crying? You think? Exactly yeah. The same. I think he'd be exactly the same. But do, what? What is that? Is he a snake? Well, is he playing yeah, a game? Absolutely. Yeah. He's always been yeah. playing a game. He'll just, he'll just be. You're so so definite. He'll just be playing a game. Yeah. He'll just be playing his games. And do you think it'll work, or will no. he be? No. 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 If the housemates no. have seen like that, he's not popular. They should put him up, and he'd be out again next week. He'll be out on his ass, yes. as the Americans would say. Uh, Linda Jay did his best peacemaking effort, which was quite sweet to see. Um, but do we think that Aaron should just kind of man up and just talk to Jay and just get it all out of the way? I think if they, they do start to get on it, it'll only be fake because they're just two different people. They don't like each other and it would just be for the cameras if they're pleasant to each other. But do you think they could, just be, world, could they, they just be civil, though? Because he, he just ignores them, doesn't he? Well, it's quite, it's quite, quite good to us, for us to watch. I'd rather they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> at least but, that's um, honest. At least, Jay, at least Jay's trying, I suppose. Yeah. I think Jay's actually a really nice guy. I mean, he's trying to get on with oh. everyone in there. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong, <laughs> Anton? Right, right, You've got right, the right. wrong next-door neighbour there, I think, to have that opinion. Uh, <laughs> Aaron was very disappointed by the whole frosted flake fight, as were we all. It was very, very upsetting. Um, Jamie, is he playing that righteous persona because he thinks people on the outside world like it? Yeah, he's it's, it's just got this weird thing, hasn't he, where he, he, won't, he doesn't like people bel belching. And when I interviewed him, when I interviewed him he, wouldn't, he wouldn't use uh, a word uh, for touching your own genitals. He refused to use it. And it made him actually made him shake a bit and it made him quite worried. He's and, a little old and so woman, he isn't just, he? he is like a bit of an old Doris. Old and he just needs... <laughs> He just needs to relax a bit. It's but just... was that all just an excuse f to get sort of get it out of the face situation? Or, no, you know, I think he's that... really like it, isn't he? It's just, he's and it brute. really does he's disturb him. The burping thing, though, reminded me of when Alan Partridge uh, <laughs> sacked all his staff because he didn't get a second series, but he made up a, ran, a really ropey excuse <laughs> <laughs> to... With, without telling him that he hadn't got a second series, and I think the bel bel the bel bel burping Belting. thing <laughs> was, uh, was the his, was his partridge thing, where he just, he just wanted to yeah. kind of split up with it. But do you think that this is... Is it an act, or is he really just sort of a guy riddled with anxieties and sort of, you know... Mm. I just think he's really, really bloody odd. Odd, yeah. <laughs> odd is the word, isn't yeah. it? D David, can you can you uh, you know em empathise with that? Because in the house, the little things get to you. I mean, it's only a burp. You're not broken the law, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't believe we so. We all no. burp. We all fart. We all do things that we don't want to do. But it's life, and it's part of life. Burping, fighting, <laughs> trumping. <laughs> and then it does appear now that the house are quite a lot happier. Mm. Is that nice to see? It's lovely to see. <laughs> um, the fact that we were living on bread, chickpeas, and lentils for a while. Don't Oh, and frosted flakes, <laughs> and frosted bit flakes. Chocolate, but um, it's nicer because maybe they're all grouped together, past tasks, stop like messing about, and actually get some proper, decent like grub. Do in you their think stomachs. your absence has affected that mood at all? No, I was nice to everyone, so I think if anything, everyone just kind of yeah, but Alex, when you look on get together. Past big brothers. We did five weeks on that, and we just got on with it. Do you know you what I mean? You just got on with it, David. We went to the diary room. We said, "Frig you." We won't eat. In my day, we lived on frosted you know, like, flakes for a year and a half, and we brother. felt fine. People watch the show. <laughs> no, people watch the show, and they want to go on it. You know, if you if you, they do actually do, you don't get no food. You starve. We did five weeks. We just got on with it. <laughs> I would have eaten frosted nice. flakes for a year, as long as I was in the house. I won't give a shit. He loved what it. Eating. He loved it. Well, um, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> don't agree with that lot. Uh, then make yourself heard and take part in tonight's poll. Details can be found near my fuzzy felt. I don't know what it means. They make me say it every week. Uh, still to come, Aden tries to explain some of his behaviour in the house to both his mum and his Liverpudlian lady friend. Awkward. See you after the break. <laughs> Week 
Like a careless guinea pig who strayed into a tumble dryer. Ooh, fluffy. Uh, so over the last few weeks, it's fair to say there's been a few Aden moments we've all had to watch from behind a cushion. Imagine how much worse it must have been for his mum and his fledgling girlfriend of sorts. Well, imagine no more. Over to you, Mr Jamie E. Thank you, Alice. Yes, it's fair to say that watching Aden hasn't always been comfortable viewing. Did he say best himself on yesterday's show? What was the quote again? I'm on national telly, I look like an absolute fucking pleb. Uh, well, I can relate to that. Uh, well, who better to judge than the two most important women in his life? Please welcome his mum, Alev, and Alev. our very own, and Alev. now Alev, Alev, and our very own, and now your very own, Rebecca, everyone. <laughs> Alev, uh, we'll come to you first. How proud of you are you of, you, are you of your son right now? Um, immensely proud. I'm just absolutely chuffed to have him back as well, so... Oh. You make me blush. <laughs> but you've got to share him now, you've got to share him. Rebecca, how I'm was last night? I'm used to sharing him. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> how was this morning? All good? <laughs> uh, OK, fine. Uh, Alev, there are some things that a mum just doesn't want to hear about, though, aren't there, right? Yeah. Uh, and you've... <laughs> and uh, over the past couple of weeks, you've heard plenty of that. Uh, I'm guessing this is one of them. What, okay, what size is yours? Very right, you can't smoke that. It's... I'm about ten. That's a lie. Ten. No, I'm dead serious. Okay, ten, that's I'm good. I'm not going to lie about it. I've slept with more than you can imagine. <laughs> no, fuck me too. Uh, me how many are you going to say? No, no, it's after. Say you first, go on. Forty-nine. Pinky. Bro, that's good for your age. <laughs> <laughs> Alev, uh, you said then, while you were watching that, you said you could confirm that. I said I knew that already. You knew that already, so, yeah. uh, I he mean... briefed me before he went in. You've changed his nappies, you've washed it, you've cleaned it. <laughs> Presum presumably you've not... Not recently. Presu yeah, presumably you've not done it for at least three and a half, four weeks. But... So you yeah. can confirm, ten inches. I'm just out of interest. <laughs> I'm, just in I'm just intrigued, you see, cos... Cos, you know, that's ten inches, right? <laughs> that... That's pretty impressive. Rebecca, is it, can you confirm that? Because I'm I shocked. I don't know. I think, can you confirm Don't go all quiet and coy now. <laughs> uh, so it's an accurate guesstimate. Should we call it a guesstimate? We'll call it a guesstimate. Guesstimate, yeah. fine. Maybe it's 11. Um, <laughs> could be 14. For, could be 14. You know. I doubt that yeah, very that'd much. Yeah, that'd be Wink at me all you like. There's no way that's 14. <laughs> now, Aden, <laughs> it seems to be alongside Rebecca, there was only one other person in the house that you really wanted to impress. Trust me. You know, since day one in this place, I've always said you're my best mate. You know yeah. Always be my best mate, yeah. yeah. It's mad. Yeah. Day one, man. <laughs> Thanks. Olaf, did you approve of that friendship in there? Or were you watching the same as quite a lot of people and wondering if Anton was the right BFF for your son? Um, I actually did approve of the friendship that they had right. because um, I think he co formed a very close bond and friendship with Anton and I think once once they stuck and I think it's a bit of a London thing as well they're both it, London boys and I, well. think, I, I think similar age I think they both come from probably they've had similar experiences in life yeah. and um, I think there was a bond that others might not understand across the country I think it's, it was very much a London thing and I, I don't know if I didn't would agree with me, but I actually did approve of the friendship. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Uh, Rebecca, you didn't listen to your advice <laughs> about Anton. Uh, why don't? Why well, didn't you? Basically, I've run the system, which is innocent until proven guilty. So obviously, I'm going to look back over all the footage. Have you watched any? Yeah. No, not yet. Um, my dad's recorded them all onto this, so I'm going to go to his one day and just have a mad viewing session, do a 24-hour drink up there, and just watch. Yeah, don't them. drink while you're watching it. I get to get angry then, though. I get angrier. So, um, if if it does come to You saw to his life, song today, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, I saw, I saw a me. song that Rebecca told me about which really hurt my feelings. And um, oh, talking about how much he hates her and stuff. And obviously, Rebecca's my girlfriend now, so it wasn't really the nicest well, thing. Well, you are. To Boyfriend and girlfriend. What a lovely, lovely... Now, as we saw in that last clip, you are a bit of a sensitive soul. Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, God. But that was just the tip of the crying iceberg. <laughs> What makes you cry? Nothing. 
I'm Dude. 19 year old no. boy. I know, I know, and it's like me. We were 10 days <laughs> apart, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Oh no, I'm 19, I'm taking problems from fucking 23, it's 24, it's all these you old yet. Oh. Thanks for that. It's alright, it's nice to see a man. man. Men are allowed to cry, aren't they? Yeah. But not that much. You did, you were a bit of, bit of a soppy sod in there though, weren't you? I was missing her most of the time. Oh. Aww. Don't need to miss her anymore, you've got her for life. Uh, now, Rebecca, is this the first time you've been with a man who's in touch with his femininity as well as his genuinity? Yes. Good. <laughs> Anything further to add on that? No. no. Yes. It's just, it, you like a man who's, who's a bit soppy? He's got a, he's got a yeah. hard exterior, but inside as soft as Every shit. girl likes to be shit. adored. Well, soft as mush. Oh. Soft as shit, it's a Derby expression. No, it's not a nasty it's, one. It's nice to be adored. It's really nice. It's mutual adoration as well, isn't it? So it's always nice to have equality in a relationship, isn't it? Oh, Lev, uh, did you raise him to be a bit of a soppy sod? No, but I, um, I've always told him that to, to be prepared to show his emotions. There's no shame in a man crying. There's no shame in a man um, uh, showing his emotions. No, absolutely. As a parent, though, as a parent, it's always horrible seeing your kids you upset. at home. He never cries at home, so... He's too, he's too busy upstairs with his sex dice, that's why. Um, <laughs> and finally, I know we touched upon this yesterday, but... Olev, have you got something to say about this? The house. Oh, oh you're amazing. You wouldn't get with anyone, yeah? Me and Trust. Mason know a lot about the house. Trust. No, no, no. Like what? Nothing. Oh! Well, let's put it to you. My like, preconceived idea the same. It's like when, you, when you've met each other... <laughs> Pure animal, bro. Oh, no, Olive, I, Olive, I've been round to yours for dinner and it was bloody lovely. I didn't see anything like that going on. What happened? What, is that well, how I think he's they been live raised? in a filthy house. No one does any washing up and there's no cutlery left over. That's why he's had to, you know, resort to eating his food straight off the plate. I think that's just disgusting. He could have, he could have, just, he could have just washed up though, couldn't he? Yeah, but who knows where the forks are? Have you seen the state of the place? It is a bit grim, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, they're it probably a... not in the sink. Well, now's no, the time. Like a cereal bowl. Are you looking forward to a nice romantic meal with him? Yeah. Yeah, candlelit? Yeah. Well, you've got the chance to set the record straight and to prove that you are now, that you are not the animal at the kitchen table, at the dinner table. Come on, <laughs> come on. So, young lad, we've got your nice hey! spag bowl. <laughs> now, does he, do you know the spag bowl technique? I'm not doing the spoon. You need the spoon. You I need don't the want to do Man, the... you need the spoon. Any tips? Come on, mother, help him out. Go on, son. <laughs> That's it, twizzle the fork. Spoon in first. Get a fork on top. I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's been the problem, that you've been left to do it yourself. And you just... I'll help you. No, but... No, no drippage. Oh. Thank you very much, Dan, Olev and Rebecca. Now, while Aden recovers, let's take a look at some unseen footage from the house with Christian Manley. Half Greek, half Welsh, half Toyota Previa. I don't know. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Big Brother's Unseen Scene, the show that's about as much fun as stumbling across the wave machine button at the over 80s aqua aerobics class. Fancy a dip? Come on in, the water's lovely. Got my head stuck in a wave Not machine you. once. Oh, right. No, I did. He's looking at the things you never normally see Joining me as ever this week is our very own John T. So John T, what's caught your eye in the uh, in the house? Have you changed your hair? Chat to you later anyway. Let's have this week's uh, headlines. Anton tells Alex and Tom he thinks he can win. <laughs> Aaron regrets last night's electric curry. <laughs> and Alex still hasn't quite got the hang of the central heating controls. Have you done a drawing there, John T? It's very good, isn't it? Not really yourself today, John T, are you? Aaron, you got, you got something on your face. Do you know what I really fancy now? One of those frosted flakes omelettes. You know those frosted flakes omelettes you have? No. It's just eat out of the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take some of those frosted flakes off the top. I mean, you know, I don't want that omelette tasting weird or anything. 
Anthony Worrell Thompson. Who's that calling in now on the phone? Oh, it's Jeff Brazier. Oh, yeah. What does he want? Mm, he's breathing heavily mm. and he wants to know if you want to go see Richard Blackwood on ice. Richard Blackwood on ice, you say? What's he doing on ice? Comedy. Com mm, comedy. Mm, no, thanks. Can Do I go? Yeah, if you want. Make sure you're back by 8. 8.30. Go on then, on your way. Gemma looks like she got out of bed the wrong side, didn't she? Anton's got away with the girls, though, hasn't he? He sort of reels them in with his sex words. Now, I don't know about you, but nothing sets off a dresser gang quite like a trilby. Uh, but, um... The one show's really fallen off, though, isn't it? All right, everybody, quiz time. Let's play The Weakest Drink. Who did the soundtrack for the film American Psycho? PSA. Oof. Almost. Not quite right, though. Uh, playing for the Citroen now. Alex, who wrote A Tale of Two Cities? Donald Duck. Well, that's not the answer I've got on the card, I'm afraid. We're going to have to uh, kill your first ball. Still, we've all had a lot of fun. Busted flow. Well, that's about it for our Big Brother's Unseen Scene this week. Join us next week when we'll have a special live acoustic set from Phil Vickery. Good night. To the camera, would you, John T? Yeah, they leave the camera still so it looks like we film it ourselves. Love your bath later. week in the house what with those purple koalas and wolf packers clashing at every darn moment uh, but we thought it was about time to put positive spin on proceedings and who better than spin doctor of brilliance david ramsden yeah. you're the man for the job now david why the hell are we here come on guys we're here now to see where all the fun got in the house Windy, windy, morning, morning. i'm sick of it are you sick of it it's like watching paint dry ten times over Where's all the fun gone? They're lucky Come to be on. there. They're lucky to I be know, there. No, they're in Big Brother, man. Come on. So, what's your first? Bloody brilliant. Moment. We've got Alex <laughs> and Tom. Okay. Two peas in a pod in the diary room, two whole hours doing the Macarena. I literally can't get enough of it. Let's take a look. Um, why did you enjoy that? I loved that. Why did you love that? I so love much? them. They're like me and Lisa all over again. They're absolutely fantastic together. Two hours in the diary room, I could not even cope 20 minutes. That was like 28 I mean, plays. Replay, replay, replay. I would have gone, please let me out of this diary room now. But Alex, it was like the first time every time. She was like, what? Amazing. Let's do it. Like the first time she's ever heard the song. It was brilliant. <laughs> so what's your next? Right, bloody brilliant. Moment. Right, we've got... <laughs> We're Louise. gonna get there, we're gonna get there. We've got Louise <laughs> drinking, swallowing, sucking, cow piss. <laughs> what, what more is there to say? Take a look. Huh. What's that one? That milk? <laughs> it wasn't quite milk, was it? No. Do you know what? I think Big Brother were a bit mean there because she did say milk and she did say cream. Both come out of a cow. Now, to me, she landed that one. She was one. tasting the cow. She tasted the, she cow. Tasted the cow. She tasted the moo moo. First she said milk. <laughs> milk, milk. No, it's cream. Big brother was a bit harsh there. She said, well done. You tasted the piss. Well done. She have, I think she would have passed. <laughs> I know she did pass, but it's full sweet. Was it worse than your stinking bishop pass? Oh, my God. I can almost still taste the stinky bishop cheap in my tooth. No, in my tooth. Tooth. I went to the dentist like, oh, what's that smell of heart? Just people the task, it's all right. Excavating it. Okay, so what's your next? Bloody brilliant. Moment. <laughs> right, we've got a dent's makeover. We had this bald razor and his little tattoo. Oh. I know, poor lad. He's like doing it with a big one, isn't so, it? Look at his little face. Okay, let's have a look at it. <laughs> oh, fuck this. I'm, I'm leaving. Totally. No, I'm on, man. What, what the Dude. fuck? I'm on, I'm on national telly. I look like an absolute fucking pleb. Has <laughs> that one got you going? Right. Can any, oh, anybody ever remember you used to get them little clowns with little lads with little tears down? <laughs> I absolutely proper felt sorry for you. The poor <laughs> lad is proper scraping his head off with his razor. What's probably five I weeks saw, old. I saw, I saw bone. And he, you went to I bone. I absolutely felt sorry for you, mate. I could have jumped in there with him Matt free and give you. Because <laughs> you do your done. own. You do your own. I do, do actually, yeah. On the D-Low. I won't yeah, tell anyone, sorry. On there, yeah, you looked at me like that. I told you that in confidence. <laughs> um, you managed to avoid the, uh, the audition. I did, because 
I, I'm not, I don't make a nice skin head. No. Too many scars from when I was young and that, and I just, I don't think I'm mad enough. <laughs> I probably would look nice. I'm not saying I won't, but I don't do skin it only heads. Take, it takes a particular I'm not head. saying I don't like skin heads, but I'm not a skin head. <laughs> no. Stop digging yourself out, David. Okay, know, what's your final? I've got three crowns, by the way, so three. I can't have a skin head. Oh. Yeah, That's yeah, impossible. Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, so does a dent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your final? Bloody brilliant. Moment. <laughs> right, the final, final one is... Oh, no, sorry, I've just gone past one. I think... Oh, no, sorry. I'll give you a clue. How angry... Anton, no, Anton. <laughs> sorry, I've totally lost you, put me off now. Anton, I, I don't know. Aaron. Aaron, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. How mad Aaron got when she burped. He, uh, was, he was livid. No. Let's remind ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with you? Why are you being so weird? I'm not being weird. You are, what's up? I just don't like hearing you burp. Are you being serious? Three words, get over it. Oh! Three words, you're an emo, seriously. <laughs> um, why did that took you so much? I just think burping's a na natural thing I do a thousand times a day. I mean, <laughs> Louis, Louise farts like a bloody trooper. <laughs> and she I can't mean, come get on, a it. fart on a burp. I mean, come on, who's the lady? It's Ledette to lady. I mean, come on. Who dumped someone over a burp? I mean, come on. Uh, thank you, David, everyone. It's fantastic. <laughs> Coming up, see what happens when Lauren Harry's has her unique style guru eye on the housemates' designing efforts. Uh, none of it's black, so you can imagine how that went down. See you in a minute. <laughs> with that lot has given us a serious case of the camera runs. Whoa, the old ones are the best. Uh, so it was a busy day yesterday for Harry as Big Brother had the nerve to test his poshness. Uh, he passed with flying colours, obs. We knew he was a genuine article all along. Look at Harry at the polo. That is evidence enough. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, seriously, seriously. Anyway, I was so thoroughly impressed with his performance that I thought it was about time we had a good old Harry-sized debate, you know, like Raga. Fabulous. Uh, to remind ourselves of the big man, here's when Harry met Jamie. So you're 150 percent conservative. What's the extra 50 percent come from? It's 50 percent. Uh, Shooting foxes, or I don't shoot them. No, I just get hounds to eat them. And when they shag at night. Yeah. That keeps me awake. Yeah. Well, you, do you live in London? I do. I do live in London. Yeah. See, yeah. we don't have that n near us, really. The noisy They're noisy shaggers. All fucking dead. You run through businesses, are you an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, I can't call myself an entrepreneur. It's rude. No, actually, you have called yourself an entrepreneur. No, I didn't. Are you going to win? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Probably How? Not. Probably not. How the hell are you going to do that? I'm a nice guy. We're getting on well now, aren't we? You don't have a sense of smell. No. So how do you detect bullshit? You so you can touch and you can see. Yeah. Can you hear things? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Could you kill a man? Uh, yep. What would make you kill a man? Just, I don't know, like eating the last of the Battenberg, that would fuck me off. A Battenberg? Yeah, I yeah, love God, that. God, he is posh. Who like, the hell likes Battenberg? <laughs> I love Battenberg. Do you love Battenberg? I lived in London for like a year. A whole year? A whole How year. did you manage with, with, with like, Londoners kind of giving it all that? And, well, it was more... Foxes shagging fashion. in the gardens. I've got nothing else to add to this conversation. That's fine. Koala, he mixes well with the wolf pack too. Um, does he have a knack of getting on well with people, David? I think he's a generally nice person, I do. I think he's a proper... If, if you were asking for a pound in the street, he'd probably give you it, but... He'd give you a hundred, I mean, oh, God, in what the is house, it, you know? He's probably not used to them kind of, like, personalities, like, you know, like, ripping each other out. I don't think he's used to that environment, so... Deep down, I think he's a nice lad. I think I, he'll make the final. I really like him, I like him. Uh, Jamie, he seems to be respected in the house. Had he done the sort of peace talk rather than a den, would it have gone a bit better? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think... I think people do respect him because he is quite a, an affable, likeable toff. But I don't think people respect his opinion much in the house because he's not really... He just kind of... He doesn't really do a lot. And then all of a sudden he'll just go, yeah, fuck off! And then he'll just walk <laughs> off. And that's it for another week. Is that his catchphrase? Yeah, yeah fuck off! <laughs> um, Linda, have we now forgotten about the sort of uh, fox hunting tag that he was branded with when he went in? Is well, it... I haven't forgotten. I think it's terrible. Anyone that goes out and gets pleasure out of killing animals, I, I've got no He's time dead to for. you. Yeah, dead absolutely. To you. But no, he, he's quite a nice guy, though. Hey, hey. 
and he, he has been brought up like that, so you can't really hold it against him. But I just think he's a bit of a sport brat, you know. I mean, okay. no, no, listen, he, he thought it was really funny about the bananas, but then he went, he kicked off just because of his clothes got a bit of dirt on them. Can, yeah. Can he sauce. give it but can't take it? Well, um, he's always been into his country pursuits, as we just said. Um, check out this uh, five year old Harry on horseback. Oh, isn't that lovely and sweet and posh? Uh, and that's his mum beside him, who amazingly is on the phone now. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Hello. Uh, which of uh, the 25 rooms in your house are you in? Um, I'm in the kitchen. Oh, the kitchen. Is it just one kitchen? Yes. Just one. How, how not posh of you. Um, <laughs> how do you think your honey bunch Harry is getting on in the house? Uh, I think he's doing really well. We I really think... didn't expect him to get past the first week. Because oh, nice. Of the <laughs> Are you proud of him? Very proud. I am too, and I'm not even his mum. I'm like, I've got a motherly pride about it. Um, he's not your typical Big Brother contestant. How did you feel when he said he was going to go in? Horrified, really. <laughs> Good. Um, he went to the first audition just for fun, and, and then I think he was really excited to keep going through. And at that time, I thought, oh, they won't pick him, that'll be fine. And then I started to be really worried that they would pick him. <laughs> and then, of course, once they did ask him to go through, I thought, if he doesn't go through, he'll always wonder how he would have got on. So I'm glad he did accept the offer. Lizzie, I love your motherly confidence. I mean, we, we didn't think he'd get in. We didn't think he'd get through. <laughs> we, we, we don't think he'll win. Do you think, do you think he could win it? Yes, I do. Um, surprisingly, yes. Uh, again, not motherly. <laughs> it's not... best to be frank, Lizzie. Just speak your mind. <laughs> you're, in a safe, you're in a safe place here. Thanks no, to Lizzie. Yeah. That's Harry's mum. <laughs> Perhaps not as easily intimidated by people. Is that why he sort of can stand up for himself? The thing that I love about Harry is the fact that he doesn't take shit. Like, mm -hmm. if, someone, if someone or something has pissed him off, he will stand up for it. I mean, me and him had an argument, and he held his ground really well, and I've got to respect him for that. I thought, what, I would be upset about my clothes as well. Obviously, he'd done the food thing, and I, all I did was get a bottle of ketchup. I'm, I'm still holding my hand <laughs> up to that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat me! But um, the judge will decide. He, he saw me as a fox that day, and he had his rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, do we think it was the shopping list uh, when he bought all the bananas and the food coloring? When we really sort of fell in love with Harry and thought he's actually quite fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Why was it? I just think it was about time that they actually shook up the house. Somebody had to do something that nobody else has ever done before. I don't think anyone's ever done that before, or no. will probably ever do that again, because it caused a lot of bad feeling. You guys said no. Who no. said no? Was, no. That Who's... wasn't shaking up the house. That was annoying, and <laughs> that would have just tipped me off. And yes. for that reason alone, I don't yes. like him. And you I don't really like don't bananas like after don't, that. I can't stand bananas, <laughs> can't stand him. So you think it was just a bit cheeky and it was, yeah, you didn't even find it a little bit amusing? It was well out of order. Not with all the yeah, frosted flakes. It was great. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, Linda, let's talk about something important now. Um, it's quite serious. His bod. Um, do we think it's pretty hot, no? No. You're not loving no, it? Everyone keeps he's saying about his hot body, even a dentist saying he's like really got a nice body. He has got a nice body. <laughs> well, <I'm laughs> Take his word for it. He's I'm been up close. Jay any day. You oh, over Jay, Jay rather than Harry? Oh, yeah. Every, every, every time. Oh. So, are we are we thinking think really good? quickly, panel? Are we thinking a winner on our hands, Jamie? Uh, absolutely, one hundred percent not. Winner, Linda? <laughs> no. Winner, David. I think top three. <laughs> winner, Dan. As an unlikely dark horse, maybe. Ah, uh -huh. so I want him to win. Um, do you, Rebecca? Yeah, That's I do nice. Want him to win. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, potential champion, maybe. Potential fashion designer. Hmm. Uh, believe it or not, do we have a T-shirt for me? Oh, there it is. There's one curled up there that can't be his. Um, OK, this fetching T-shirt was designed by Harry himself. I believe they're supposed to be zebras, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, here's what happened when we paired up resident style expert Lauren Harry's with dirty, sexy thing Jay Camilleri to assess the housemate's design efforts. Hi, it's Lauren Harris here. I'm here today to look at all the t-shirts the housemates have made and I have a fantastic model with me, Jay Camilleri. Hi darling, you okay? Hey, how are you? Great, thank you. Thank you for having me down. Bring on the first model. Lost in Lust by Anton. It's, it's, it's the worst t-shirt I've ever seen in my life. Awful. I think it's shit. You wouldn't use it to put your potatoes in. Right. Next person, please. Your first opinion on Alex's T-shirt. Um, I did think above the sign pink it was a dildo. <laughs> it looks a bit Picasso. 
This is Jay's creation. The flames are there because he's always on fire. Get it in the shelves and watch it fly away. This is Aaron's creation. He's trying to be sweet in his t-shirt to show he's like, oh, I'm just Aaron, I'm just perfect. His t-shirt's ready for the bin the TV, the, instead the of ready for the shop. This is Faye's t-shirt. It's called Fabulous. Fabulous. Her creation was made on a dark, rainy night. Faye, Faye, Faye. <laughs> it looks like it's been hacked by... A five-year-old. Well, this is um, Aunt Eden. It's very busy, but I kind of actually really like it. And um, everybody could identify could get, with it. Yeah. Get that in top now. Get man. that in the shop now. So this is Tom's t-shirt, Jay, and it looks more like a straight jacket. Let me just say, I don't think this is gonna catch on. The sleeves look great. Like, if you could put your arms through them. I feel like Sharon Osborne today in this chair. This is Louise's top. I like it, it's cute. Mm. It's cut low enough that a bit of boob could be showing. Oh, I love like, that, that idea. I love that. I love love that. that. So, Harry's T-shirt, obviously a zebra lover. It's basically something you buy at a zebra shop or a zoo shop. Yeah, a zoo. A zoo. And I've just seen a zebra. Do you want this for your child? Yeah. He's a dick, and anyone who buys that top is a dick. All this modelling is bringing back some memories, and uh, I thought I'd show you how it's done. Put your money where your mouth is. delivers Channel 5 schedule with haulage based reality well we like to think of ourselves as providing all your car crash TV needs here's today's news at 11 39 a.m. the housemates had to face the aftermath of last night's epic battle no it's not it's not funny though is it I think this is funnier than fucking up the food but oh, I, I, it's it's I think the frosted flake thing definitely that was fun. When else, when else are you going to have a frosted flake fight? Big Brother does expect it to be cleaned up, Alex. I'm doing the most work. A lovely clean house. Aaron will be pleased. Uh, he may have left, but at 1.37pm, all the sex talk was about a den. Ma, that's what this bed smells of. <laughs> After all that sex, certainly. Ooh. Becky no, and Ads. No, Ads. Ads never confirmed to you lot that he had sex with her. Ads doesn't know how to have sex. <laughs> it's not, no comment. I slept with 42 girls. What? Now, the thing is, I, I, I was slightly confused because um, he's 19, he had a girlfriend for two and a half years. So that means the relationship started at, what, 17. Uh, he said lost Virginia at 15. Uh, and he said he was on 40, but then he told you guys on 50. I was confused. Now even I'm confused. Uh, I think someone's got their figures all wrong. At 2 p.m., Tom and Alex finally unleashed the full version of their hit anthem, the Tinfoil Song. Tinfoil, I want to wrap you in a bowl. When I need my food to be fresh, you're the one I call. Tinfoil, I love you, that nest of crunchy feeling. Tinfoil, I love you, shiny and appealing. Tinfoil, we can find you at any good local store. You're affordable, even, even to, to the, the poor. <laughs> oh, solid gold, well, maybe aluminium. At 3.03 p.m., as part of the task, the housemates received some explosive messages from home. It's Faye. Harry! Oh, shit. Your bomb has shit. been activated. Uh, shit. <laughs> All he's going to do is sit and smug laugh at us because it's an awkward situation and he doesn't know how to handle himself. Anton A. Anton A. Sure. I hope it was you because I wouldn't see a smug laugh at this because it's an awkward situation. I think it was Jeff. Oh. oh. Mission failed. 
Your letter has been destroyed. It was from your girlfriend. I would hate, hate so much to disappoint my girlfriend. So to know that she'd, she'd written me a letter just makes me think that she, you know, she's still, still waiting. Oh, poor Harry. I was going to make a joke, but I actually feel quite sorry for him. Uh, so that's today's news. But what, what's happening right now in the house? Jamie's in the runs to find out. Well, shocking as this may be, Alice, uh, the housemates have actually been given some alcohol. I know, I know, they've been living, uh, they've been living like slaves for so long, they've finally been given a treat and having some beer. The cafetiere is the star of the show for the past two nights of the camera, and last night we saw Jem uh, sipping some water out of it, which looked horrible. Now Anton has taken up the lead and put that in, put drinking beer out of the cafetiere. I believe at this moment... Jay is telling the housemates about the merits of Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea, which is a classic tale of a plight of an old man p fishing for a swordfish, and it's a metaphor for life and growing up and growing up and, and getting old. I think, I think that's what's happened. I can't be sure. Actually, he's not. He's just been talking about how he shagged five women in one day. Uh, I don't really know which one's better, to be honest. Anyway, back to you, darling. Bye. Thank you, Jamie. I am with Ian and Henry in Digital! Digital! Digital. Digital. Beautiful. Uh, okay, first things first. Uh, what is this about a den taking over the Twitter sphere? A den is taking over the Twitter sphere. <laughs> what? He's going to be <laughs> tweeting live from at BBUK as soon as the show finishes. So people can ask him anything minutes. they want. Anything they like. Anything. anything. Okay, Henry, I've been asked um, to get a fresh impression from you. All right, one sec. Oh one my sec. god. One oh my sec. god. What is happening? I'm so confused. This task is shit! <laughs> was, was that Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Who even knows what he's I, doing? I can do an impression. Oh, la, la. oh, look at me, I'm Alice Levine. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, well, this has been a fun time for everyone involved. Yeah. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, but that is it for tonight. Well, Join me tomorrow. Yeah, oh, what no, a shame. Then. For the yeah. game show. Oh, do you want to tell me the result? No. Fine. Uh, and now, <laughs> in keeping with the grand tradition of showcasing our talented audience, something a bit slinky. You're going to enjoy it, so don't get in a hump. Uh, please welcome Marina, Mike and, and Gemma, also known as Misfits, who tonight sing an ode to that slippery snake, Anton. Take it away, ladies. With a taste of your lips, I'm on a ride. It's getting late to gig you up I took a sip from my devil's cup Slowly, it's taking over me Now, with your loving now. 